Welcome to Own It, your business and your life with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur, marketing, money, and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty, and very lively. So sit back and enjoy the show. Hello. Hello. Oh, afternoon. How are you? <clears throat> All right. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. It's very sunny in Shoreham today. It's 27 degrees here today and 35 tomorrow. Oh, grief. <laughs> how can it fluctuate so much, we ask ourselves? Well, actually, that's not a lot. 27 is high for England. 35 is very high for England. Yeah. I think I'll lie in a dark room. <laughs> which is well, I, I, I plan to do precisely zero. And last Friday was very hot as well. And the gardener comes on Friday, and he came on Thursday last week, and I thought, you clever man. And I'm hoping he might come this afternoon for the same reason. <laughs> well, I, one of my bedroom, my, well, my bedroom blinders broken, so I've had to order a new one, and it makes it very easy to lie in a darkened room as it's, as it's shut. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about your week. Oh, absolutely bugger all sap this week. <laughs> oh. I was filling, I hope you've got lots to talk about, because I was... I, I have. Yeah, good. Oh, excellent. I went round to Heather's for scones and tea. I went up on the roof lots of times at the weekend. I played poker with Pete yesterday. We were both terrible. And um, had a massive row with Nelson, which was quite entertaining. <clears throat> and uh, we, it was really funny because we got... St- he, basically, I was cooking my dinner. He came in late from work and he'd been to the pub with his mates. And he came in and he caught sight of... He, he's very, he gets very irritated about visual mess. But he's, he's a typical man in that he only ever cleans up the things he sees, which is not about, I would say, about 25% of stuff. And so he went off about this box, and I went off about him implying that because I was working from home, I, one of us should do it and get rid of the box. And uh, we both, it was very unlike us, because in our family we don't row at all. But he caught me on a day, and he, he, that was it, he accused me of overreacting. Typical gaslighting. Oh, you don't you don't like that? No, I don't like that because no. I'm, I'm just reacting. I'm not overreacting. Yeah, I'm just reacting. Yeah, and he had reacted to the box, and I had reacted to him implying that I should have taken the box out because I work from home. Was it a hot yeah. day? It, well, no, it was a warm evening, but that wasn't it. It was just, you know... It, it was he's just, normally quite calm, isn't he, Nelson? I don't think of him as a rower. No, he's very zen-like. Our family mm. are all not rowers. But anyway, mm. it's quite funny because we both let, let each other have it for about two minutes. And, and then we both looked at each other and laughed. laughed. yes. It is quite funny in a way that you're, you're arguing over a box. I know. And, uh, and then he gave... Oh, he said, I do love having you here. <laughs> so he came and gave me a great... <laughs> Hug. and he said good good you know and then we had a, a proper discussion about what had really happened yeah and um you know he said good on you for standing up for yourself and i said yes. yeah, well you know you have to sometimes don't you was he implying that you should have taken it out because you worked at home or was that your assumption no no he he does have those feelings um that he now he's working he goes out at seven in the morning half seven in the morning and he doesn't come back usually till seven o'clock at night i said but nelson the the recycling mm. is is your job Mm. so I don't see why I should take it out and I said and I do everything else and he said what what everything else I clear up after myself I said yes but that's all you do yeah. so I said to him when was the last time you you wiped the top of the fridges when was the last time you cleaned the tiles behind the cooker when was the last time you you wiped down the sides of the cupboards because they were a bit getting a bit sticky when was the yeah. last time you washed the floor when was the last time you cleaned the toilet when was the last time you you cleaned the bath yes. you know and so he said well I suppose if you put it like that <laughs> So that's, and I think, yeah, that, I must say, over over the years, I was going to say, over the years, I've observed the men in the lives of the women that I know come home from work with a very bad smell up their nose about the state of the house when the women were trying to hang everything together, often with toddlers. Yes, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? And but we allow them to do it, and on that evening, oh, well, I wasn't so they, to do it mm, anymore. You know, no, good for you. Good yeah, so yeah. I stood up for myself and all womankind. <laughs> so, yes. yes. <laughs> what about your week then? Because I haven't had a serious meal for several days because Ocado's last delivery was immediately after the last heat wave. And I'd ordered seven salads for seven meals for a week. And the only seven items that were missing from it were the seven main meals that I had ordered for a week. So I thought, can I manage to eat off the incidentals? 
the will I be eating toilet rolls by Thursday? It's Thursday, isn't it? So mm. basically, I had to cave in and order food to sort of, I've sort of now I've got an overlapping thing where I've got, and there's another reason for it. In the end, I'll tell you, there's another reason for ordering today as well. And, and it reminded me of that time. Do you remember in January when I was going to eat juice for a week and the only thing Ocado couldn't deliver me was the juice that I yes. ordered, which was the only thing I was going to eat all week? <laughs> I mean, actually, both times have made me laugh because they're so funny. It's like, so sorry, we couldn't deliver you these seven items out of 35. And you look at it and you go, yeah, but they're the seven meals I'd planned to eat this week. It's very funny. Um, and to be fair, in 25 years, they've only done it to me twice. So that's all right. And what I have observed by this moving around, I mean, I, I definitely think if they can't supply salad, it's because we had a heat wave last weekend. But I think what I've noticed in the moving around is that obviously there are... I don't know what you would call it, really, depots. Um, I don't know how many depots a cardo have got, but the majority of them work fine and one or two of them not quite so well. Yeah. Okay. You're That's gonna, what I would say. Not going to name postcodes. <laughs> well, I will, I will say that the people that supplied me in um, Bromley in Kent were the first bad experience I'd ever had. And that was like after 17 years and um, the things being out of stock and not delivered are not great here. Uh, even in the countryside during COVID serious was better than this. Um, but anyway, there we go. It's all right. It's great. It's great. It's just that I haven't had a proper meal for five days. So I had to eat it. It arrived about 20 minutes ago and I had to bolt it quickly because I was so hungry. I haven't seen real food since the weekend. <laughs> oh <dear. laughs> I can, um, I can report that watering is now much better with my new hose attachments. I am still wet, but not all over. Oh, that's... <laughs> Just down the front. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been the end of the month since I saw you, so I've done my July month end accounts. Always a timely treat. My nephew's cat, Fish, is coming to stay on Saturday for a week, but she's not allowed out, which is worrying me a bit because if the temperatures are going to stay up here in the 30s and I've got to lock her in the kitchen slash conservatory, I'm worried about that. But her mother, my nephew's girlfriend um has we've exchanged emails about that and she is the daughter of the household in which i'm staying so i'm not i'm not taking too much responsibility for this it's not my cat it's not my house and if anything that goes wrong um it won't be my responsibility but i'm looking forward to seeing fishy she's a little elf that's good haven't seen her since she was in the co-op ad yeah. oh really oh you remember that i told you that about six weeks ago she was in the co-op ad the first ad that my nephew made from home I don't remember knowing the cat was in it. Yes, she was oh. fishy. Um, and um, thank you to the pet owners of Facebook, because I put up this little post for you last weekend that said, I, you know, I so much love you all for sharing your pictures of your dogs and cats. And they all took that to mean that they would send me 99 more photographs of the same, which <laughs> wasn't my intention, but it was very lovely. So I got to know some cats and dogs I didn't know already. And indeed some strange very strange creatures that live in tanks. I'm not quite sure what that was. I didn't want to look too closely. Vivarium, they well, Louis's word, if you're listening. It wasn't a vivarium, it was something else. Something else. It implied it was a snail, but anyway, whatever. Um, <clears throat> and finally, caller, Esther, um, I decided, or I, I, I've had my first epic fail in my attempt to move from the aluminium Nespresso coffee pod to the fully compostable coffee pod. The coffee is vile and this seems to be the consensus on Facebook and I'm not sure why that should be because it's just because it's packed in cardboard instead of aluminium. Well, except that it doesn't come from Nespresso, of course. I've had these thin, te I, I, they, they wanted to get me onto, um, you know, one of those automatic customer, it comes through your letterbox in a nice flat pack thing like your contact lenses arrangement, yeah. which of course is a brilliant business model for them. But they don't offer you a starter pack so you could work out which of the eight or nine or ten flavors that they supply you would like to have in your regular order so I ordered one of six or seven and I've tried five of them and they're all vile I'm not really very optimistic well they're not vile they're just thin they don't have body and they don't have flavor which frankly what's the point of a cup of coffee yeah I was just thinking this morning as I had my first cup of coffee before my eight o'clock client call from New Zealand um Really, it's only worth getting up at this time in the morning for a cup of coffee. Well, it's interesting. I only have one a day, but I have yeah. two pods in it because I like a belter. And I haven't had one yet today because Ocado, I got them to bring me some pods because I just couldn't eat the, drink this filth anymore. It just wasn't, it wasn't really coffee, actually. And so I said to Facebook, have you all tried this? And they said, yes, we have. It's not nice. And even those two marvellous planet savers, Margaret, Margaret um, and Beck, you know, in, in yeah. Cardiff. Yeah. Even Margaret said, well, there's not, there's, no, there's not a patch on that coffee, Judith. And aren't the aluminium pods... Um, recyclable I said they are but as you know I have this theory that they're not I think they're I think they're paying lip 
services. That I can't imagine what somebody does with all of those spent aluminium pods. They anyway, probably make whatever. canoes out of them somewhere. Well, I, 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 I can't imagine somebody. It's like there's a little mouse, a little shoemaker somewhere that's opening them all up and tipping out the coffee. And I don't know. Are they flattening them? What are they doing? It seems like a, a dreadful combination of coffee grounds and, and aluminium. How can you make? How can you recycle that? It's a mess. You can make roofs out of aluminium. Well, aluminium coffee. No, you'd have to get rid of the coffee first and then flatten them out. Well, that's my point. It's it's too it's it's an inappropriate job. Well, I don't know. You know, my survivalist tendencies. I can see that I could have quite a few use, uses for aluminium. Yeah, but you wouldn't want anybody before it got to you. Aluminium, yes, but I mean, you know, a first an empty Coca Cola can. I get you just squash it, bang. But you can't just squash these because they're full of coffee. I don't know how they do that, and I don't want to go into it, and I don't want to learn, quite frankly. But but it makes me suspicious about whether an espresso or not are actually com- you know recycling kids. them. Yeah, I think they might be. Sorry, an espresso. I just believe everyone's selling fibs nowadays. <laughs> anyway, so people have offered to send me samples and I go, no, look, I've got a kitchen full of the filth. Let me just try and get myself organised. Let me get a decent cup of coffee back in my life and let me, let me try and slowly plod my way through. I secretly already know I won't. I'll probably bin them. They're disgusting. <laughs> Right. Well, at the risk of boring our listeners even further, <laughs> my fueled by fire is all about my Hello Fresh delivery. <laughs> well, there you go. Okay, what's fueled your fire? I got my last week's meal from Hello Fresh, and um, for seventeen quid, uh, I got four meals for two people. Thinking on the, working on the premise that I could have the leftovers for lunch the next day, they've all been absolutely delicious. I'm enjoying it enormously, but I'm Good. a little concerned about the lack of vegetables. So I think you'd have to have supplement to with, yeah, yes, yeah. But um, they've all been absolutely excellent. They've got they've re- rejuvenated my interest in cooking. Yeah, no, it's all good. So I can highly recommend it. you get fifty percent off the first week, thirty twenty five percent off the next week, twenty five percent off the next week. You so, have tried things like this before. The one that you tried before was called Gusto. Gusto. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's right. It was back in the day when um, Sarah was sharing a house and yeah, Greece. Yeah, no, it's good. I really enjoyed it. But uh, the, the interesting thing is it came in this massive box, the box that caused all the trouble. Oh. And uh, <laughs> I did have to fess up to that. It came in this massive box and they, they were all bagged up per meal. So you don't, you could literally just lift them out and put them in the fridge if you had enough room in your fridge. And what I, I didn't, so I've only got two shelves in our fridge. I had to, um, I had, and a wine rack, obviously. I had to uh, take them all out of the bags and put them into, you know, other places and uh, but I, I I was just so impressed with what a brilliant business model this was and how cleverly it was thought out and how how it must be making the dining hours of of lots of professional people much much more enjoyable I just think it's brilliant okay cool yeah so I, was, I went looking to, for, to see who owned them to see if I could invest in them because I think it's such a such a good business model um because my um my you know investments are doing rather well 150 percent up on the old sip I th- so I thought I'd go and find out who owns them but unfortunately they're not publicly quoted yet Gusto, Gusto maybe but hello fresh is not so okay if you know what about you what's fueled your fire Oh, well, I had an interesting conversation, and this leads into a wonderful testimonial from my best ever testimonial giver. But um, I found this nice post, which opened up a good debate, and it says, creative people need time to just sit around and do nothing. True. Something, something I totally believe in. And a businessman, who sometimes gets on my wick, bless him, and I don't think he's a listener, so that's all right, he commented as follows, to a point, but not indefinitely, as they need outlets for what's been created. To which I replied, from coaching them, this is the bit they miss out, the time to sit around and do nothing. I teach them the other bit, and it's comparatively easy, actually, surprisingly and beautifully so. And it's so much easier than you'd think because people actually want to buy beautiful things. In comes Sam, a client of mine who's a writer, with absolutely the right answer. She says, from experience, we are trained from school age to produce, to deliver, to create something concrete. We are measured on our results. This is the bit that we know how to do. The bit nobody tells us about, the crucial bit as a creative, is the doing nothing, which is actually doing everything, because when a creative is doing nothing, they're actually writing the novel, envisioning the painting, doing the thing. We need that time to figure it out, and the fact that our coach gets that, is time well spent, means that we know we're with a coach who gets us and values us, and we love her. And I replied to her about being a joy to coach, and she topped it off with, you've coached me, a fiction writer, perfectly through these last few months of writer's block, to the point that I'm now writing the next novel, because you can put yourself in my shoes and get me out of my funks. 
And then I thought about that and I thought, well, you know, I've been working with her since August 2013, which is seven years. And if all that time and I don't know how to get her through writer's block, who on earth does? Yeah. It's, I always think of that, that thing as germinating because you can't see anything happening. But well, the, the if I said to you at the beginning of this podcast, what we need to do more is sit around and do nothing, you would have taken an argument with me. I know. <laughs> you, you've learned to do that in the last few years. And actually, the important word here is creative people. Well, actually, all people do. But in terms of cre- producing creative output, we you're germinating. Yeah, we need time to sit around and do nothing because actually it's in that space that you have these brilliant ideas and, and um, intuitions and it's like, oh, I know what to do now. Yeah. That kind of stuff yeah. comes through, doesn't it, in the space. And I wasn't surprised that this man who was a businessman, he went straight to the point my brother would as well, which is, well, don't let them sit there just doing nothing. Well, I'm not letting them sit there and doing nothing. I'm encouraging them to sit there doing nothing because they don't do enough of that, according to my opinion, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had um, a problem solve itself, you know, the other day when I was... What was ah, I love for problems. I love yeah. problems solving themselves. If you give a bit of space, that's exactly what happens. Tell me about it. I was folding my underwear... I know it's weird, but um, I like to do it. And I, it takes, by the way, we won't go into how many Could times. I just ask, is it your pants? Is it your pants we're talking about here? Because I fold, my, I fold my pants as well. There's nothing nicer than a nice, neat pile of pants. And um, so anyway, <laughs> I was folding them. It takes three folds. That's the size I am now. And, uh, I, was, and I was just mull, mulling over this challenge I had. And this, this solution just popped straight into my head. Mm-hmm. So doing it. It's quite amazing. Mm-hmm. Very good, very good feeling. Yeah, I think sort of potter, even even pottering about the house. And actually, I asked myself a question this morning, which is, what can I do while I'm waiting for X? And the answer came, you could finish off Jordan Peterson. Like that, it came as fast as that. Wow, that's really good. It's like having a conversation. I mean, it doesn't, it, doesn't always, it doesn't always come that fast. That's what I was trying to say. We've got a small delay, which we need to remember. Yes, okay. <laughs> Right, so let's tell me about Focus of the Week then. Okay, it comes from sea painter Jo Payne. I absolutely love her work because all of her paintings are of the sea. And she's offered us a nicely emotionally brave contribution, which I'm going to read to you. And oddly, it's on the same topic as uh, what fueled my fire. Time off is not wasted is the, enti- is the title of this week's podcast. She says, the importance of continuing and allowing ourselves to be true to ourselves, whatever happens, and self-care, in capital letters, throughout. Because once we are stressed to the point of incapacitation or illness, we can't actually do our best work. I've learned and relearned, and I keep having to learn, that looking after myself properly is and must be a priority, otherwise it all goes to pot. This bloody ear can be so crippling. I'm just recovering from a very painful condition brought about by clenching my jaw unknowingly. And I hadn't actually realized I was stressed. Now I'm religiously fitting in yoga, Pilates, meditation, breathing exercises, walking outside, lying on prickly mats, listening to gongs into my daily life. And it's a wonder I have time to actually paint. But if I don't do these things, it all goes horribly wrong eventually. And then I can't. Also, time off is not wasted. And then she apologizes, which she doesn't need to do for being very wordy as usual. I will um, link to Joe's Facebook page and her website, which is cpainterstudio.com, because I want everybody else to see how much I love her work. Now, so it's not really a question so much as a sort of ranty reminder. Yeah. <clears throat> well, where do I start? Um, it's really weird because I saved a Harvard Business Review this week and it was called How to Forget About Work When You're Not Working. And it's really aimed, I think, at people who find it very hard to switch off from what they do. But that is entrepreneurs as well, isn't it? And it was saying that while we can't let go of work while we're out of the office, we don't get to enjoy the benefits of time away. So to wean yourself off work and un- unwanted thoughts of work, you can you can use all sorts of different things. And the one, the first thing they chose was something that I found as well. Focus on what you'll do instead. Instead of focusing on not working, focus on what you'll do instead and schedule time in. And that's what your, your lady was just saying, wasn't it? She schedules time to go and do other things. And I think that's what I've got to do more of it, because it's only when I, and it's, I was thinking about going on holiday again the other day. And it's only when I go on holiday that I really, 
am able to do nothing. You know, that nothing where you sit in cafes or you stroll slowly along a seafront or you you just don't do so anything. So you, you like, yeah, you like your break to be formal, not informal. Yes, yes, I do. I find it, well, I find it near, nearly impossible to stop, um, you know, thinking but if about... But you, if you... If, if you think about it, that's not a surprise because I don't know how long it's been since the factory worker, the common man, was given two weeks off in August, but not very long. It's only 100 or 150 years. Before that, we just worked until we dropped down dead. So this idea of working 50 weeks and having two weeks off in August is is the culture we've been brought up in. Yeah. So it's almost like by having a holiday, you give yourself permission. To stop permission, yes. Work. Yeah. Yes. And do you know what I'm thinking when you were talking? I'm thinking there must be an awful lot of people, people in jobs who, since they've had to work at home in the last four months, have discovered they can't switch off as easily because there's no f- physical uh, separation. Now they're working at home. Yes. Yes. It, it talks in this article about changing your environment and that, how useful that can be. But um, yeah. the other thing is about having you know I, I found having an assistant really helps because although we know when she comes up there was an issue the other day and um, something wasn't working right in Libsyn I thought oh I could go and have a look but then that's not enabling her to go and have a look and then mm-hmm. it's a support ticket. so I'm getting better at, at thinking to myself no she needs to do that so I said why don't you submit a support ticket while I'm asleep tonight and see if we get the answer back in the morning and that's exactly what happened she you know she worked through it but sometimes yeah. People need encouraging to do that, don't they? And and yes, you, yes, and yes. especially if they're not sure that you've empowered them to do that. Yes, yes, exactly. So should for me, it's about formally scheduling time to go on holiday, and somehow that enables me to switch off. I think being an entrepreneur as well, you're constantly thinking about where the next pound or dollar is coming from, and it's very hard to switch off when you're the sole responsibility for that. Uh, you know, I'm I totally. I'm now I'm preaching to the converted here but um that's yeah. so so you have to think to yourself i'm going to oh I, whenever i go and get my feet done that that i find that very relaxing when because you're just having something done to you and you can't do anything while they're doing it you can sort of look at your phone a bit i suppose but that's and and that's so having beauty treatments is very relaxing um what else i'm just cool the rest of the time with the fact that i love what i do and because I love what I do, I like thinking about it. It's not a chore for me to be thinking about work outside those things. But you do need to recharge your batteries. You certainly do, yeah. And the grinding the teeth. I grind my teeth. I, I also don't think there's, <laughs> yes. I don't think there's any correlation necessary between loving what you do and doing it so much that you don't feel stress. I think it, it, it's a sort of explainer for why we do do it. Because, of course, she's an artist. She probably loves her work as much as you love yours. Yes. I, I, I don't know enough about the painting process to, to even speculate about what, what, what thinking about. Well, I tell you what's good about it. I, yeah, I tell you what's good about the painting process. They don't try and do it the way we do it. So they don't expect to do it for 40 hours a week. Yeah. So well, they, they do it when they feel inspired or do they go into their workshop? Well, they, they, they do it. Yeah, they, they all do it differently, but they don't go in at nine o'clock and stop at five o'clock. Uh, I'm sure some do. But, um, I, you know, I think the majority of them, if they got two or three long sessions in the studio in a week, you probably probably wouldn't want to try for much more. You don't you don't think it, you, you and I sit down at a desk vaguely from nine to five mine's about ten till four these days but we vaguely sit down in office hours I I don't think they do that I mean if they were slacking I'd encourage them to do a bit more of that but they they don't try and work this sort of office hours yeah and I, I think with writers they you know they they are encouraged to sit down and be more formal about it and and you know to sit down whether the muse is there or not and just write something I, but I think you know mornings or afternoons again is enough for that Yes, I nine agree to five is not. Yeah, yeah five, nine to five is not ideal to try and force words. No, no, to, I, don't, I don't think any creative thing can be forced at all, can it? I mean, my creative. Oh, you can t- you can show up, you can show up, but you but, but you know uh, you can't force it. No, see, I find the most unlikely things creative. Like I find editing really creative, and you have to be at your desk to do that. Writing again, yeah. you have to be at your desk. So what I need is I need things. Whenever I'm thinking about self-care and, and switching off from work, I have to think of things that are not at a screen because everything I do... I agree. Is at a yes, screen. I agree. 
I agree. But actually, it could be. I mean, I know it's most unlikely to be for you and me, but it's not unlikely to be for most of the people I follow on Facebook going for a walk because then you can't be sitting down and typing at the same time. Um, you know, even just now when I was walking around the house, loading, unloading the, you know, the groceries and all that kind of thing, I couldn't be doing else, anything else at the same time because it's quite sort of humdrum. I could easily have had a brilliant idea in that time. Yeah. And then, you know, because I I listen, when I'm doing chores like that, I often listen to podcasts and things or just put a YouTube video and listen to the words. But that's, that's occupying your brain to the point where you're not letting the space for the ideas to come through. The only time... I don't, I, not, not, only if you don't have it too loud, it depends. You see, that's the thing. If it's info in, then you are using the brain. If it's, say, the 532 and you have it down at the low volume setting, I think you are leaving space. Yeah. No, when you don't have to think about what's happening, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. We've talked about this so many times, haven't we? Just, um, well, I, I always call it, with the beauty treatments, I call it a, an appointment to lie down, and I mentioned it either last week or the week before, quite often, um, because you have to force yourself. I wish I could get into the habit of going out for a daily walk. I just find them so boring. Why? Because I do. I don't know why. Do you know, when I had a, a personal trainer and I had to go to the gym three times a week and I had to be there half an hour before she came to do the treadmilling stuff by myself because that didn't need supervision, it never bored me. Walking on the treadmill never bored me because it's just it's like half an hour to think. Yes. It never bored me. And I couldn't, I, I used to, I was actually quite annoyed with the people who'd be watching the television. I didn't, I don't find life boring. It's because my head's so interesting. I don't find life boring and my head's so interesting, but I don't like walking. Yeah, well, that's the point. So it's not that it's boring. You don't like walking. I don't like walking either because of my knees. Yeah, well, I don't like walking because it's boring. Well, I don't think it is boring, actually. <laughs> I have to take a podcast with me to listen to. I don't think you're alone there. And I think this is the disease of modern times, which is we yeah. are always doing something. Yes, and we need to stop doing quite so much of it. Well, just ease back. <laughs> not be too radical. But what I like about Joe's story is... The, the, her body keeps reminding her whenever she forgets. Oh, that's very good, isn't it? Well, it's not good, really. Well, she but... says, I've learned and relearned, and I keep having to learn that if I don't do it, it all goes to pot. And, you know, think, you know I'm just recovering from a painful condition. A painful condition will do it. Yeah, that'll, yeah, that'll change your ways. <laughs> yeah, but, but, you know, there's always a penalty to everything if we don't look after ourselves or do the right things. There's always a, pe there's always a penalty, isn't it? Yes, and it takes it takes one to make you change your your, your ways sometimes. I think it can do pain. Yes, I, we all go. Pain on. is a good. Okay. Yeah, I do. I think do think pain is a good provoker of change. It's it's often the only provoker of change. <laughs> yeah, away from pain or towards pleasure. It's always yes. the pain that's the greater incentive, isn't it? I will say two things. When I was reading her list. <laughs> It reminds me of me quite a lot. So when she says, you know, she does all of these things and now she doesn't know how she has time to actually paint. I do so many things. I sometimes wonder how, you know, my day fills up with 500 words and tapping with Marion and two lots of brain training and I love my life. And it's like, it's lunchtime already. Where did the morning go? It's like, how, how, how have I got time to do any work? But um, there was another point. Oh, yes. On the day Joe sent this in to our group, which is quite a long time ago now, four or five weeks, um, another client was having a breakdown moment and got on PM to me and I said, oh, let's, um, let's have a chat about it. And we spoke and she explained that she was a bit melty downy that day. And I gave her the advice, which we always do, which is all you can do is double the medicine for, you know, tapping and meditating and journaling and walking and gardening. She's very good at gardening. I think gardening is very therapeutic for the, yeah. for the emotionally stressed. Yes. Um, and I basically just said, you know, double the medicine. And uh, she went off quite happy because she knew that was right. Yeah, you just need someone to tell her to do it, give her permission again. Yes, yes. Because it feels like slacking to some people. Uh, uh, yes, to some people. I don't think it does to me anymore. No. And I think it's because I just, I think I know. I think I know, well, I think it's to do with getting on a bit because then you just can't do all the things you, you, you used to do. You know, I remember, not me, but my friends, 
when they were in their teens and 20s, early, middle tw 20s, you know, everybody could work with a hangover. You just rock up to work the next day with a hangover. And then once all my clients, all my friends started to be things like writers, it's like, oh, I can't drink in the week anymore because I can't. You know, once you get to your 30th birthday, you can't drink in the week because then you can't turn up and be productive. And, and actually, once you get to 65, I don't want to work from nine till five. I'm happy with 10 till four. Everything changes as, as you notice your capacity is affected one way or the other by your other behaviours. Yes. Yes, I've definitely noticed it. And um, I, you know, I, it's funny because as I've heard you talking about things, it's sometimes taken me a little while, but I get there in the end. As well. well, it can take six years, Nicola, because you're actually six years younger than me. That's the point. Oh, I think, okay. you know, I, I'm, I'm going through life ahead of you by six years. And how long have we been doing this podcast? About Five six years. <laughs> yeah, no, a bit, about, about six. This is a long time. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, my God. So what's your word of the week then? Counterintuitive. Okay. Because both of those topics, creative people need time to sit around and do nothing. And time off is not wasted. They're counterintuitive to the self-employed or to the high achiever. Yes. And yes, and you have to learn how important they are. Before you tell me your word, could you just tell me what was the article called, the Harvard Business Review article? How to forget about work when you're not working. I can send you a link. I have yes, it right please. That would be good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. My, my word of the week is Groundhog Day because it started to feel like that this week. Just getting up, doing the same things, going to bed, getting up, doing the same things, going to bed. In one of my uh, financial forums, they talk about that all the time with Punk Satorni. I've never actually seen that film. Oh, well, I, I don't know if I've seen the film, but everybody knows the concept, which is interesting, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. What's so, that called? There's a name for that. What? Yeah, that's called. where something that comes from popular culture becomes uh, the expression that everybody uses there's a word for yes. that hmm. yeah there is you're right like uh, hoover yes that's a good example or google mm. i'm going to google that when it, yes, becomes it verb, once it becomes a verb oh dear yeah. Yeah. Mm. project updates then yeah you go I'm working through my five day challenge training course again because I've set the date for the 7th of September and it's quite astonishing how much I missed the first time because when you do the, any training, I suppose the first time, especially if it's quite de in depth training, you, you miss, you just do the minimum that you, you need to, to get the end result. And I'm going back and working through it again, which I have to say is taking quite an effort of willpower on my part. But it's, it's quite good because it means that I've got the cemented in the sort of level one stuff and I'm now getting more sophisticated with the level two stuff. So I'm enjoying doing that. And the other thing is just having a look at the podcast numbers. Uh, just a little reminder to the listeners to share us with one person this week. It's July and August. People love to listen to podcasts when they're lying on some bits. What are the numbers? Uh, they're, they're, um, hang on a second. I had them. Uh, we were averaging sort of six hundred to a thousand downloads a week, and we've just the last three weeks we've had six hundred, six hundred, and seven hundred. So, and do you know what the total number is? It's been a while since we've yeah, one hundred and fifty-five thousand two hundred thirty-eight. Okay, that's not a big leap. It's gone down again then. Yeah, we yeah. As I said, it's we back. It, it always dips in July and August, so that's why it's, I'm just reminding the listeners to share us with one person. Please. All right. So I need to ask you a question that I didn't understand in what you said about the five day challenge clicks and leads reworking through it again. On the one that you did in July, yeah, um, you've confused me by the introduction of level one and level two. Are these levels? These no, challenges? no. When you when you, um, when you do a new thing, you you go through it the first time and you understand it on a superficial level and then when you go through it especially if the thing's quite complicated and nuanced then when you go through it a second time which i find it really difficult i can't watch films twice i can't read books twice so i'm forcing myself to go through this training a second you know thoroughly a second time yeah, to improve it presumably but i know that i've missed stuff the first time round, and yeah. It, it, it was just all too new and overwhelming. I get you. So it's your level of one appreciation and then your level of two improving it, is it? Yes, exactly. Yes, okay, yes. got you, got yes. you, got you, got you. What about you with your project updates then? Uh, yes, I did one of the questions yesterday. I've done five out of eight, three to go. Hang on. So unless so, I accelerate so, it. A posse of emergency vehicles. Sorry, start again. 
Well, they're coming for you at last, Nicola. <laughs> Take me away. Oh. Yes. <laughs> 84% done on the Jordan Peterson self-authoring project. I've done five questions out, five goals out of eight. Um, the minimum I will do is one each week so I can report it to you on a Thursday, which is my self-chosen accountability, uh, unless I follow that. Um, intuition I had which was to finish it faster which I don't rule out oh I find it quite interesting the idea of you setting goals now yeah well they're not goals that's my problem these they're worded as goals but mine aren't of course (laughs) yeah I don't have any goals the rest of my life at all no well these are my my eight things are all about states of being very nice Mm. that sounds much more relaxing I must say but you see goals are about achievement I've already achieved everything in my life I wanted to achieve yeah Who or what's impressed then? Well, this was blank yesterday. <laughs> I, I was actually going to say to you, I can't think of a single one. And then I was with a client at three o'clock yesterday afternoon. And her name is Sue Hills to me on Facebook. She's called Susan Ann Hills. And she, a, f- a while back, long before I knew her, bought a care franchise, which of course has been quite an interesting business to be in in the, in the first half of 2020. And, um, she gave an interview to every woman. Do you know every woman? No. Oh, it's quite a big online. It's quite a big and old. That's not the word I mean. Long standing online. Yes, established a community run by two women for lots of other women. And they have two levels of membership. And Sue is on the higher level, which is called ambassador level. And I think they have some kind of interview an entrepreneur every now and again thing. And she was on one of those interviews because she's creating a new business on which she and I are working together, which is called Zenith Women. She's a star profile and and is very happy on the stage, but this was her first experience of being interviewed for her new project. And she talks a lot of sense in it and she's got a very nice haircut. I don't know where she got that from during the thing, but she did. Now, Every Woman is this big organization. So this first outing for Zenith Women will be seen by many of of the people and women in the right catchment for her. She also had some great things to say about entrepreneurship and particularly about leadership, which I found thought provoking, particularly as some leaders in our world are behaving rather weirdly right now. I'm going to link to it on here but I I imagine quite a lot of our listeners are already members of every woman and might have might have seen it already Susan Ann Hills uh, and and it's called rediscovering your passion and understanding where you can add value is the gist of it but it's much broader than that and 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 lots of the members ask her questions at the end which are it's very revealing when you see what the questions are at the end that the wannabe entrepreneurs are asking yeah yeah. But she handles it with a plum, and you know it's actually her first one she's done in this new thing. And I went, "Oh, you're an absolute natural!" And what a nice haircut. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Uh, well, yes, yeah, I mean, it sounds it sounds interesting that one. Well, I I was like you, I was struggling a bit because I thought, well, I, I can only go on for t- so long about the bloke who won um, MasterChef Celebrity, <laughs> who seems like a very nice chap. But I managed to ruin it for myself by accidentally spotting the winner on Twitter. And it did say spoiler, but it didn't go into my brain quick enough for me not to, um, you know, not to take it in and actually see his picture. So I was very, very grumpy last week indeed at the end of the week there. But the thing that I, I'm, I was, I've wrote in here, Brett and Eric Weinstein, you know, the, the, yeah. the, the boffins, they've started this uni, Unity 2020 project. And I'm not sure if it, you know, they're going to be able to get it going in time or if it'll make any dent in the universe at all or whatever. And I was watching one of their, um, Watching intelligent people discussing things without getting mad or, you know, it's very, I'm, I'm enjoying that very much. I'm listening to a lot of Sam Harris and all that stuff at the moment, but it's made me realize how I'm really not able to tell nuances. I'm not very good at strategic thinking and I'm not very good at nuance thinking because they were saying things like, oh, you know, um, something about left wing or right wing or whatever. And I was thinking, I I would never have picked that up, you know. So they were pointing out things that I wouldn't have noticed. And it makes me realise why politics is just such an impenetrable mess to me. Because I just cannot, I cannot think. Well, I think they, these two are much better thinkers than the majority of politicians, by the way. Yeah, absolutely, yes. So, yes, they've, they've just done this. It's a Unity 2020 campfire. And it's just two very bright blokes talking about something they've come up with as a possible third way in you know uh, that could lead america out of this mess 
and it's just very interesting to listen to them talk about it in a intelligent, unemotional, uncharged fashion. Now, well, I tell you what's interesting to me about what you're saying is, and I and I said it, didn't I, when I had the visit from Paula and John, we're a bit starved of intelligent conversation and thinking because actually the stuff we also enjoy is quite dumbed down. Yeah, yeah. You know, we don't need to be intelligent thinkers to watch. We don't need to be, yes, we don't need to be intelligent thinkers to enjoy that boy winning MasterChef. No, no, we don't. I can't remember his name. What, what is? I don't know his name. He's some sort of social media person I've never heard of. Yeah, neither had I, but I like him a lot. Anyway. I thought he was lovely, yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was very gracious and, and, and humble, which was nice. Um, yeah, so there you go. So, and, then I, and then I scribbled it out. That was the interesting thing. I scribbled it out because I thought, I don't want to upset any of our listeners by talking about something that I may be talking about something that's, you know, triggering to some of our listeners. And I thought, oh, don't be ridiculous, Nicola. Put it back in again. It's your bloody podcast. Well, I think this is a choice and I don't think this needs to be a trigger and the listener must take responsibility for their own response to what we say. Yeah, that's very true. And it's really weird that I'm even thinking that. So let's press on regardless. Well, we have thought about it, both of us, yeah. haven't we? Yeah, we have. We have thought about it. Uh, and actually, we shared a video this week that neither of us had talked about, but what an impressive young man he was. Yes, he was. Yes. Yes. You know, there are impressive, intelligent people about. Yeah. And let's, let's, maybe that's what we should make a, make a cosmic order for. Bring more intelligent people into our lives. And do you know what I like about intelligent people? They can be... Um, they're quite good at that boy that we both watched the film of brevity you know he made the best summary in 20 minutes of anything we've ever seen and you can watch far less intelligent people banging on for like three hours and not get as much out of it I know and it was some of the reactions to that that made me again think about you know how I just I don't see implications in things I just don't see yeah yeah but you will if you keep applying yourself I'm really impressed by this oh okay I'll keep applying myself. Don't give up. Well, the good news is you're motivated to keep applying yourself because it's not dull to you. No, I like... I like. Yeah, you like being stretched. Yeah. yeah, you do. You like being stretched. Good on you. Thank you very much. And on All that right. happy, positive note, we'll, we'll see you next week. week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye for now. Bye. You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. Do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com. 